Comment time! Mr. Gamer for Life writes, Please give me a shout in tomorrow's vid. It'll do anything, Lord Griff. Alright, I don't know why you want me to do this, but here it goes anyway. <coughs> okay, I gave you a shout, so now you have to hold up your end of the bargain, which, if you recall, is to do anything. So, send a video to it's the program at gmail.com in which you slap yourself in the face. Say, I love It's the Program, and then slap yourself in the face. And then send that to my inbox. Now, if you don't do this, Mr. Gamer for Life, I just won't be able to trust you anymore. Also, in your comments, you didn't specify how many times you'd be willing to do, quote, anything. So this might go on for a while. See what you got yourself into? Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's September 7, the 250th day of 2011, which means that 15 years ago today, Tupac was fatally shot four times on the Las Vegas Strip. For those of you who don't know, Tupac was a rapper. Rappers being those musical artists that wear clothes that are too large for them, drive cars that bounce, and never smile in photographs. You know their music. It's mostly rhythm-based, and it's usually about living the hard life of a street gangster, despite the fact that most popular rappers are richer than God. They wear large, gaudy pieces of jewelry, codenamed Bling, and live hedonistic lifestyles to match. Anyway, this Tupac character apparently ticked off the wrong guy, and was subsequently awarded with four complimentary bullets. He died six days later in a hospital from respiratory failure and cardiac arrest, and his body was later cremated, mixed with marijuana, and smoked by the members of his entourage. I know I falsify history on a regular basis, but I swear to you I'm not making this up. Tupac's ashes were smoked. I get high with a little help from my friends. Thank you, Tupac. Please be careful, viewers. Smoking your friends is a dangerous gateway drug that can lead down the path to harder substance abuse. Next thing you know, you'll be snorting relatives and shooting your recently deceased dog into your arm. For a while there, it got pretty bad. I would just open the newspaper to the obituaries and scan for a funeral to crash, just, you know, hoping for just a toke of a dead person. I had myself convinced, man, that I just needed one more hit of a cadaver, for, for old time's sake, you know, and then I'd be done. I found myself hoping for the worst whenever my friends got sick. And then I realized that my ailment not only hurt myself, but it hurt the others around me. I mean, it literally hurt the others around me because I tried to get them killed in freak accidents. It sounds sick, I know. But the first time you take a hit of corpse, you realize why it's such a sought-after drug. It is the best feeling in the world. I guess I just have to thank my friends. They're my anti-drug. You know, until they die, and then they just become my drug. I don't know, the whole drive-by shooting thing, the thug life, loud and proud murder where they probably held the guns sideways, it just seems way too exhibitionist. I personally find the assassination that took place 33 years ago today to be much more interesting. So this Bulgarian dissident by the name of Markov is going on a little stroll down Waterloo Bridge when he feels this sharp stab of pain in his leg, but a small one like a bug bite or a sting. He looks around for the offending bug, sees only a man picking up his dropped umbrella, and then dies three days later. As it turns out, the bug bite was actually a 1.5 millimeter diameter pellet of toxic ricin, no bigger than a pinhead, fired into his thigh from the tip of a modified umbrella. The doctors didn't know it was ricining poison when he was admitted to the hospital, but even if they had, it wouldn't have mattered. There's no known antidote to ricin. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. Until tomorrow. He's Griff, and he's still talking. When did my hair get like this?